Welcome folks to the Technivorous channel. This is an in-depth look at the latest full release version of Prusa Slicer. This is version 2.3. Now there have been several different alpha versions and a couple of betas for this and throughout those versions they have instituted several changes. So we're going to jump over real quick and we'll take a look and it'll tell you all the different releases they've gone through here all the way from alpha 1 through 2.3.0-RC3. So there are several versions and each of those versions has its own changelog and bug fix list and it even says right in here to go ahead and check out each of those individually if you want to know what all the features are so that can be a little complicated real quickly I'm gonna give you a rundown of what we have here in the new Prusa slicer that you are gonna to want to be aware of so stay tuned it's happening right now on the Technivorous channel Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivorous. Alright, so here it is, Prusa Slicer 2.3.0. So, I have a torture egg here that I'm working on. Please, please don't ask me for the file. It is not done yet. I will make sure to post it when it's complete. We are printing one right now, uh, but we are going to do some more changes to this blank space here and get some more negative space going in there. I just wanted to make sure that the angles I have now don't need to be adjusted and that they are actually printable. There are some kind of steep ones in there. But the reason I chose this model is because it's going to allow me to illustrate a lot of the new features in this version. So I'm gonna start down here with seam painting. Now seam painting is exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna be able to select the model and paint where you want the seam to go. So in this particular model, I think that I want the seam to be on the inside so if I just reel carefully and slowly and it doesn't matter if it's straight for me I'm really just going more for hiding it on the inside of the model here and obviously it's not going to seam across that gap oh uh oh I messed up so what I need to do is go ahead and hit shift and the left mouse button and I can remove that selection and I'll leave the rest of that there I think I'm just gonna go ahead and and all I'm doing is left clicking okay and going right up to the top there now each of these three models is gonna have a seam and it's impossible to paint on all three of them alternatively one of the things I can do is take my right click and we'll increase the brush size here this is one of the amazing things about paintability so I'm gonna block the seam basically on the outside of as much of this model as I can and I'm right clicking in order to paint the seam blocker instead of left clicking to paint where I want the seam to go so um, in theory this should keep the seam from the outside of my model and make it harder to see and that could come in very handy when printing an all round model like this. There's really no hard corners for me to put a seam on on the outside that will look good. So putting it inside should reduce some of the finishing work. Now, as I said, there are some pretty steep overhangs in this model. So let's say that I wanna paint some support on here. Yes, you can paint support on as well. So uh, left click is going to be painting support, which means it'll put support right here and if I right click it'll support block right there so let's go ahead and do a little bit more painting here support that area there and let's go ahead and turn on supports now and we'll do for support enforcers only and that's gonna make sure that I'm only supporting those areas I wanted to. So now we'll slice, we'll go over to preview mode here, and you should be able to see where I painted and where I didn't, um, or where I painted the support blockers and where I painted the support enforcers. So it doesn't put support anywhere that I did not paint. As you can see, both of these openings are still open, but it does put support here on the top. As you can see, it also winds down on this part here. And on this side, it does not do that because I put support blockers there. So everything seems to be working as it should be as far as painting on supports. These are a couple of the major features you're going to be digging in this new version. Now they've also made some changes to their SLA programs and things like that. 
as well as one of my favorite things that they have here. I'm going to go ahead and open this up if I can. There we go. Nope, those are STLs. Let's see if I can find a G-code file. There's one. Uh, the standalone G-code viewer that comes with Prusa Slicer is pretty amazing. And I can wind down through the layers. This is an object that I had sliced earlier and saved the G-code. But the cool thing about this is if you have a file that's G-code, you can go up here and hit Export Toolpaths as OBJ. And you can get the object back to an OBJ file so you can change the slicing settings if you want to pull it back into Prusa Slicer and slice it differently or things of that nature. So really, really handy tool, really, really cool. And you can actually go back here and, and, and just kind of run through the whole toolpath. And I mean, this is a pretty common feature for a lot of slicers, but to have this standalone viewer like this is that, that will convert it back to an object for you is kind of nice. So that's basically all we're going to go over on this version of 2.3. There are a lot of other things, so stay tuned. We will have some more in-depth looks at this software coming up. But for today, that's going to be it. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Don't forget to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.